ladies and gentlemen, uh, just chilling here like a villain outside at the patio of the coop off 33rd P. We're brewing some beer. I got my own recipe boiling away. I made that pearl hop edition. Uh, it's called oh, the aroma is so wonderful. But you know what? What's brewing beer without drinking beer? <laughs> just the two and two just go together. The sangria, red ale, Michael Brown special locker. All the way from Portland up into the town of everything, America's Vancouver. This is Imperial Red coming at 50 IBUs, 8% alcohol by volume. And look at that deep mahogany color. Just providing a beautiful display of yumminess. <laughs> Beer treat, central. Here we go. Now this is a malt head's dream. Thick, it's creamy, it's got mouthfeel, body. The malts blend very well with the hops. Kinda has a little bit of a smoked flavor. It's not overpowered. It's not an overpowering beer. Michael likes to brew the beers that are just kick your teeth in, raise the roof, take care of business. This is uh, definitely a dark beer that has a sessionable quality of, uh, I don't know, kind of leaning almost towards the, the uh, stout. Stout style. A little bit, just a little bit. Multi. It's not like a, a Northwest, Pacific Northwest. Usually I notice that they like to like really raise the bitterness levels up. And uh, 50 IBUs is, is sitting there at this with the standard ale, uh, uh, like an amber ale or something. Or yeah, maybe it's traditional to style. I, maybe I don't know. But it, it doesn't give you that Northwest effect. Yeah. Awesome. So we got a lot of things going on today. So what's going on, Darren? Well, I'm brewing a five-gallon batch of a new recipe that I created there at the Bader Home Brew and Supply Shop here in Vancouver. Uh, I just went in there and I talked to the kid. I, I don't think he has a whole lot of brewing experiences himself. I don't know how he got a job there. I think he, he wore the wine shirt. So maybe he's a wine guy or something. Knows more about grapes. But when it came to the bal malted barley, he helped uh, threw in the, the, the little twist that made this recipe happen. Uh, I, I just said, okay, well, I got the hops. I got the hops from my friend Ben and Marie's farm. I got eight ounces of Cascade and eight ounces of Willamette hops grown organically in a dry sack uh, bag over there, <laughs> air packed bag. You want to go give me those hops, William? I want to show the camera. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got my hops and I, I used Pearl for my bittering unit, which is going on right now. And uh, I'm going to use Willamette for these guys for my flavors. I'm going to finish out with Cascade. Good old Cascade, right? Everybody knows all about Cascade. So anyway, I went in there and I was like, well, well, I knew what the hops I was going to use, but I didn't know what grain and what yeast to use. So I went in there and I was like, okay, well, here you go. And I went in there, and I went in there, and I went in there again and left, and I went back in. <laughs> okay. Being silly. Being silly. Okay, well, I know I need at least about 10 pounds of two-row pair. I got Mara's Otter. Put a pound of Crystal 40, pound of Honey Malt, and what do we do? A pound of, uh, half pound of Rye Malt. And then we finished out with a quarter pound of peat, smoked peat. So, we eat the white yeast, uh, American Ale yeast. 
sure that can be too affordable. Should make a f mighty fine ale under my belt. Spicy aroma. Yes. Citrus. And these are organically grown Willamette hops from my friend's farm in Coburn, Oregon. They're going to be opening a brewery called Agrarian Brewing. And they're building really the, the farmhouse right now. This is going to be neat. They're growing hops. They're an organic chili farm. Ben Tilly and his brother Nate. Nate works at the homebrew supply shop in Corvallis and is good friends with uh, Joel Ray. So, they're growing. This is from last year's uh, harvest. I want to put an ounce of this Willamette for my flavor. And this uh, special batch of beer that I, I have not named yet. <laughs> I think we would do something like fog glasses or something because when uh, William looked over the, the, the beer kettle, his, his, his glass is fogged up. <laughs> So, try to make that name into the beer somehow, in some way. We'll make it happen. Super, super spicy. It's not citrus. Very fragrant. It doesn't want to, like, you know, make your nose hairs curl up and go away. <laughs> they actually straighten out and say, hey, I want to smell that again. So I gotta announce uh, we'll have it hot, so I'm gonna drop it right in, make it happen. Alright, there we go. And I want it that boil for oh let's see, 20 minutes. Then I'm gonna add my cascades for my pitching. Aromatics. To the brewing! Not back to the future, back to the brewing. Drinking with Darren style. Look, I got a whole eight ounces freezer pack dried organic cascade hops. From my buddy Ben oh, my buddy Ben Tilly's uh hop farm, organic vegetable hops. They do it all out there in Cooper, Oregon. I was down there in Eugene last uh what two weekends ago, the Sasquatch Beer Festival. Kicked out. Major ass all over the place. <laughs> Literally in the festival. <laughs> and I want to add an ounce of these these homegrown cascades to my new brew. Wow, they're really flaky. I'm pouring all over myself. You can't get messy with the work. <laughs> using this little scale for a period of time. When you fill the whole uh, bowl up with the, the box, basically get it to the brim, it usually weighs out an ounce. So I don't even really need this scale anymore. I can just know that filling it up all the way is, we got, we got, is an ounce. ounce of organically grown cascade. My friend Ben Tilly's Going into the boil. No. One ounce. Finishing off this hot liquor wort that will become beer in about a month and a half's time. A lot of ink. <sighs> we brew beer. We make it happen. 
Don't touch the beer kettle. I need to pee. <laughs> Here it is. The beer is done. Going through its uh, premature, premature stages of being developed and getting induced to its uh, yeast culture. That's blown up in a white yeast bag back there. So what we're trying to do is create the most perfect environment for the yeast to eat this fermentable sugar that I just created this big vat of hops and wort. I'm gonna chill this wort down, put the immersion chiller in, get it down to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna transfer to my primary fermenter, pitch that yeast, and it's gonna do its job for about two. because I'm a dumbass and I forgot to put it in at the 10 minute mark when I put the cascades in I should have dropped this in there too. <laughs> to sanitize and you know get all the nasties off this uh, copper coil that's been sitting in my garage for a couple of weeks. Well you know what I I effed up and I didn't plan this and time this right put my immersion chiller in there I'm gonna boil it for 10 more minutes just so I am safe. I'm good to go. My beer is going to be A-OK. -okay. Right? So let's start the boil up again. I don't think the Cascade hops are going to be so so stingy and opposed to me doing this for 10 more minutes. Big deal. I mean, big beers were brewed or boiled for 90 minutes. This was only a 60 minute boil. I really don't think that's going to be a problem because we change the way of brewing every day at home. Just get that heat up. Well, finished up with the boil. Added them cascade hops, put the immersion chiller back in, get it sanitized, nice and ready to roll. Everything's clean. Now this is the most sensitive process of brewing at home is to gently take care of your new brew baby. And we want to chill this wort down as fast as possible ASAP. Now, now the commercial brewers, they will run their wort, their hopped wort, through a heat exchanger. Now, I don't have a plated heat exchanger, but I do have an immersion chiller. And this uh, copper coil fitting was sitting there in my brew kettle. And it's going to chill this wort down to the probable, the proper yeast pitching temperature roughly about 60 degrees Fahrenheit also by cooling that wort down quickly it, it, it prevents a bacterial infection and any kind of nasties that could harm the beer at this uh, premature stage of development right so I just put it in there and put the garden hose on take this hose Stick it underneath this uh, rock, whatever. Yeah, one of these. And turn the hose on. Whoa! I've had some good home brew tonight. <laughs> got the exchanger in, just gonna let it chill. I can, this this section is very hot. Uh, cold water's running through the coil and basically collecting the heat that's inside uh, the beer kettle here from the wart. And it's running it up through this pipe, this hose, going out into the good soil Maybe. of Mother Earth. So what it's all about, drink with Darren style. This is what we're doing. We're out here on the back porch in P Street, P, 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 P Street and 33rd, downtown Vancouver. Okay, got this little little bad boy this brass monkey right here right check this out I'm gonna put this on the valve the the ball valve of my uh, beer kettle always chilling the wart down to pitchable temperature for the yeast culture I'm about to add to my primary fermenter has been sanitized and sitting 
before it's time needed. Now, let me give him a spray bottle. Spray bottle, spray bottle, spray bottle. Move, ooh, yeah, look at that. Just like the pros. Oh, 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 there we go. Spray the neck. It's all, it's all good. Oh, do one of these too. Rinsable, rinse free. Come on. Second on the end. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, Bessie. Get on that barb of the valve. Okay. Here's the primary 60 gallon hard boy. Clean, ready to rock and roll. Put over the ball valve and. Shoot! There we go. Oh, one thing we need to do real quick. I'm gonna close the valve for a second. Need to get the high drummer. Find out the original okay. gravity. Oh, a little down in there. It's gonna get a quick, fast in a hurry sample of gravity reading. Oh my god, work wasted. Perfect. Get that in there. Now I can fill up my carboy. Open that valve. Let it roll. Still got the kink. Beautiful cooler. Awesome, awesome. We kick ass, we take names. We're home brewing in Vancouver. You know what? I have a great idea. Anybody that's out there watching this program right now, I like to home brew. I like to brew beer. Let me rephrase that sentence that I just said. Homebrew brewing is the same damn thing. I want to brew beer. I am brewing beer. And anybody out there that has fascination with brewing, come hook it up with Drinking with Darren. Brew some beer. I, I want to make Vancouver's first cool homebrew club. You know, across the pond, we got the Oregon Brew Crew. The what, the longest living brew club? Home brew Vancouver's club. Vancouver's got the Plato Republic. Bunch of beer snobs. That's boring. Let's do the cool brewings. Let's talk about guys that are, you know, 21 and over. But, uh, under the age of 35. No offense, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you! <laughs>